This is actually like, oh, thank goodness we can move now. <gasps> There's a health pack. <laughs> GPT-5 has been released and it is currently rolling out to users of every plan, which is quite cool. Now, in today's video, I want to spend less time kind of talking or doing any form of preamble and more time just getting some hands-on experience and testing with the model. With this, we are going to be using the pro variant of this model today, which we can see I do have pre-selected right here. Now, I have not at all even typed one single letter to this model, so this will be my first time actually using it, and I do want to test it on some prompts that I sometimes reserve for more state-of-the-art models and things of that sort. The only thing I really would like to make note of are, I find it funny that they've kind of put some of these game demos and things like that here. I do believe this is one of the first times I've seen OpenAI put something like this in an announcement post, so it does seem this model is very poised towards its capabilities in terms of software engineering and tasks similar to that. I do find it funny that this game, if you just spam the space bar, the thing goes off the screen in the upper bound. So you can, it's basically like an infinite way to win. Now, the only other thing I want to note is the drum simulator here is fascinating. That is a really, really cool test, but I could have sworn I'd seen it somewhere before. Oh. So let's hop right into it with a traditional browser-based operating system test, which is something that I like to use just to get a feel for the model's stylistic design decisions and what they integrate. So truthfully, for a test like this, I suppose a model of this level would be expected to produce a desktop OS with multiple things such as functional terminal with at least some simple commands, a functional calculator, obviously you would have a text editor and some other things like that. Normally they put a system clock and some of them even go as far as to do a little start menu with some fake options and fake files in a fake file browser. Now, obviously, this is less of a test of actually like making an operating system and more of a test of its creativity and ability to make something that aesthetically mimics an operating system, but it will be quite interesting to see. And as I am rambling on here, I noticed that there is a details button right here, which I probably should extend so folks can actually see what this thing is doing. And what we see right here is somewhat similar to I believe what O3 Pro would be able to show you if you wanted it to, where it just gives you some information about what it's doing, but this is by no means the actual verbose chain of thought that the model will actually be um, kind of self-producing right now. So just kind of rather abruptly, we see that it has completed a result in about nine minutes and 14 seconds. Now, truthfully, I was actually expecting to see this appear in some form of artifact window. As outlined in the demo they did, it seemed a lot of its code generations were shown there. So I'm not 100% sure what the deal with that was, but I will just kind of briefly comb through the feature list right here, and then we'll go ahead and just take a look at the actual generated result. So let's go ahead and take a peek at this. You will notice if you watch my channel, I'm using Windows. Unfortunately, I could only get this working in, oh, wow. All right, this is, this is a significant improvement in at least the UI that I've seen for this. So, all right, first and foremost, sometimes this has happened where I become enamored with the design and then I realize that I've neglected to actually check functionality and then something is broken and then I look like a fool. So first and foremost, okay, we are verifying that this window actually is able to be moved around. Let's check our ability to resize. So I'm not getting the ability to resize based on the corners here, which is a negative. That is something that I have seen. However, if this actually does All right, all right, that, yes, this would represent a leap in generation of a model, just comparatively. I've not seen that able to be done in any generation in any test I've ever done with this. The ability to actually create new files has never existed. Truthfully, I am wondering if the actual functionality of like using this to navigate to files would work. Yes, okay, <laughs> so, all right. Okay, so we just kind of see our apps reflected here. However, it is giving me a text box with the possibility to search. Now, I have never, okay, 
So that is something that I've not actually seen before. And again, this is supposed to, I'm judging this based off of like, this is a generational leap. So we have GPT-4 and all that stuff. This is GPT-5, so it really needs to wow us. And truthfully, that is not something I've ever seen before where it gives me the capability to actually search apps and then narrows them down based on what characters I type in. So with that, let's just start going one by one through these apps. Um, I'll try the calculator first. And, ooh, very pretty. Okay. I can't resize it, which is a negative. Usually I'm able to kind of drag in the bottom right and resize. But I will say the actual aesthetic quality of this like UI is more modern than the other generations I've seen from other models, where a lot of them go like Windows XP style and things like that. Let's just verify functionality. So let's do 84. Where's the multiplication button? Oh, times 6, which would be 504 or something. Yes. Okay, good. So this does work and that is good to see if I try to minimize this. Okay, it does put it down in the taskbar and it seemingly will highlight the actual thing that's currently open. So it seems good. All right, let's uh, let's try the terminal because this is always one. Very cool. All right, type help for commands. I shall. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I need to be in this text box. Oh, Okay, so I, this has a, the most I've ever seen here is like echo, clear, and help, or like an about, which is kind of just put in. The actual amount that exists here is something I have not seen. Okay, print my working directory. Let's see. Okay, and it just prints out where I am currently. No, don't, okay, don't tell me. Danger zone, I love it. If this lets me actually change the background here, I will be, I don't think, is there an image in this? <laughs> okay, it's an image. This is like, I don't use this computer for, oh, okay. <laughs> We're next level, folks. I've never, I know it's stupid and simple, but this, like, the. okay, that's my robot, by the way, but that's aside the point. This is significantly, significantly more intricate than any result I've ever received in this test by a long, long shot. I mean, we can change the theme. It lets you use a custom wallpaper, a custom image. I'm going to go back to the default gradient, which, okay, that seems to, let's reset it. Damn. Okay, this is, this is really good. I mean, I almost, there's too much to say. It actually has a functional file explorer here with actual like subdirectories and things like that. It put in a text app and things like this. It even gave us like a funny to-do thing. I can say... Like, okay, let's just save that. Saved and then, okay. This is far, far more functional than any other test I've seen, um, any other result I've seen. And then it's gone. So if we go back into documents, it, it actually deleted the file. All right. So let's just open everything here and make sure like we can't open things multiple times. Oh. All right, so that's a that's a downside of it, but we'll just kind of ignore that. The fact that this actually lets you change the theme of this operating system, put in a custom background, reset, create, delete files. It has a relatively decently functional terminal as well. This is by far the best result I've ever seen for this without any question at all. So next up, we're going to be asking it to create a web version of a 3D racing game in the style of low poly, where basically it should just show us the view from the cockpit of the car. There should be a simple track, a simple opponent, and then like a lap counter and things like this. Now to date in this test, the absolute best result I have ever received in this was using the recently released Gemini 2.5 Pro DeepThink. So that did the best like job on this that I've seen to date. However, based off of the results we saw here in this web, operating system where this was significantly more functional and intricately generated than any other result I've ever received with that same prompt. I do have very high expectations for this. With this, I do believe this will take a relatively long time as this is arguably a little more intricate than the web-based operating system test. But I will say so far, and truth be told, this is honestly the first time that I've used this five model, like period. I am extremely impressed with this. 
and like, <laughs> I almost don't want to say this on camera, but this is really making me wonder like what sort of things can be built with this model, um, like in the pursuit of financial success, I suppose could be said. So I'm <laughs> really very excited to, in my personal time and projects, actually play with this and see some of its potential capabilities. All right, so first and foremost, we are met with a compliment where it said, awesome brief. So I very much appreciate that. I kind of needed that right now. I built you a self-contained web game that matches your spec. All right, and then basically we can just download the game HTML. That's very interesting. And <clears throat> excuse me, this is not something I've ever seen where it didn't actually put the generated code in line in the chat here. It didn't put it in any sort of artifact window or anything like that. It just gives me a random download link to click. So uh, <laughs> let's just go ahead and do that just, all right, hey, I mean, that's easier. All right, I guess I'll just go ahead and open the file. All right, um, hmm. so we have, so, all right, here's the problem is it put the camera, the Z height of the camera is too low. So even if there is like actual decent stuff going on right here, we can't actually tell because the camera Z height is too low. And unfortunately, I'm not getting any real feedback here. So truthfully, I will say that in one shot based off of this result compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro DeepThink, that did a far, far better job on this prompt, which is surprising. Truthfully, I would have expected this to have done a bit of a better job here. All right, so I did just go ahead and kind of manually change the camera parameters here in the script because it was just going to be like a simple XYZ coordinate change. So based on that, here's like what we were supposed to have seen. Now, I do note that for some reason, it doesn't actually go forward. It only goes backwards, which is, um, you know, kind of obscure. This, this makes, <laughs> this road is a disaster. Look at this. So yeah. <laughs> Again, it's um, interesting, somewhat disturbing color palette, honestly. It's, it's kind of like, <laughs> and we have our opponent who, oh, okay, well, all right, that's just not quite right. Um, yeah, so the opponent is there seemingly drifting around. <laughs> it is a result. Um, there are some mountains in the background truthfully giving this like some form of outrun or synth wave style vibe would probably be pretty cool and this does really feel <laughs> it feels more like drifting as i maybe mentioned um the steering wheel does actually turn which the gemini deep think result also did have but overall this result is uh, pretty poor comparatively to what I would have expected based off of our initial WebOS test right here, which was absolutely beautiful. I do find it somewhat notable that it did seemingly use a very similar color palette between these two generations. So uh, with that, <laughs> let's move on to a next test. I want to give it a test in Python. However, I want to really give it full creative freedom here, aside from very, very loose boundaries and what to create. So I am just asking it to make a first person shooter using Python, something that will really wow me. I would imagine this will take a decent amount of time to actually go ahead and generate just comparatively to the prior generations taking like north of 10 minutes. So, so I've swapped computers to test this game because I'm just I want to use the Python stuff on my Linux computer. Now, oddly enough, this is ChatGPT, but it doesn't actually understand that it has the new 5 model yet on this system, which is somewhat obscure of an issue to face. However, I do have the dependencies as well as this project zip downloaded here for our from scratch. So we have WASD to move, shift to sprint, the mouse to look left and right, left click to fire, and then like a bunch of other, ooh, and a new procedural map. That is interesting. So. Let's just go ahead and see what this looks like. All right, so first and foremost, I can't seem, okay, well I can move, but I, I'm like stuck. It put me in like a, is that a wall or a? <laughs> okay, wait, actually, hold on a second. This is actually quite good. If you look at, okay, the, the ammo's iterating. I swear it was one to switch to the shotgun. Or, do I have this plugged in? Yeah. I thought, okay, well, shift to sprint. 
All right, let's try N for a new proceed. It, hey, I'm getting attacked, but I can't see what's attacking me. <laughs> All right, let's try a new map. Oh, look. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is, this is, well, this is quite good, I think, because it's hard to move around here. And can we just walk through these walls? Damn, the movement is a bit obscure. I don't see any enemies, but, oh, is that it? Okay, I don't quite know what that is or what's, okay, the game is lagging now. Uh, let's just do a new map, okay? This is so close to really good. <laughs> and I'm not able to shoot, oh, because I have no ammunition left. Oh, so it was one and two to switch between weapons. Okay, so I have the shotgun here if I, <laughs> you can't actually shoot, it's just like, I will say, though, it's procedurally generating these maps every time. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was... How do I get my cursor back? Oh, okay. That was really good and also really bad. I suppose I'm... Oh, shoot. Did I just... <laughs> All right. No, this is pretty good. This is actually like, oh, thank goodness we can move now. Oh, there's a health pack. <laughs> this, that's a door. I, I'm not, oh, well, I think I just shot the door and it disappeared. Get away from me, weirdo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, this is awesome. This is really actually like impressive. And yes, it might be like glitchy and things of the sort, but Again, keep in mind that each time we press N, it's generating a new procedural map, which maybe can attribute for some of the weirdness that we're seeing right here. But really, this is cool. I'm getting too into this. This kind of makes up for the uh, low poly car racing disaster. Oh. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, let's try one more. Yes. All right. Now I have a good feeling about this. Ooh, health pack. Okay, but that thing is shooting at me. I can't seem to really properly like get a hit in on that enemy creature. I'm also stuck here. There's an invisible shift is to sprint. And that does actually work. This is probably going to get really boring to watch. I apologize for that. But I am enjoying enjoying myself. All right, overall, that's just going to be kind of a quicker test of GPT-5 Pro and some of its coding capabilities. Overall, it does work pretty decently. I was not super impressed with the second test we did, which was the low poly 3D racing game. I think that I, well, I know for a fact that I've seen better results from Gemini 2.5 Pro DeepThink than what I saw with GPT-5 in terms of that specific test. However, the web-based operating system was by a long shot the best, most intricate and in-depth result that I have ever seen from that test ever. It was allowing me to change the color theme of the operating system, the desktop background, the terminal had an extremely large list of commands that you could actually use. Beyond that, you could make new files, and it was really overall just what would be representative of a generational leap as one would expect it to be in a test like that. Finally, the 3D or 2.5D FPS was very good. It would have needed a little more work to be perfect, but definitely for a one-shot test, it was a really quite fantastic result, and it was actually quite enjoyable to play with. So really, that is just going to conclude what is an introductory video just on some of the GPT-5 Pro coding results. I think as time goes on, we will see more interesting things and things of the sort. I know some of these benchmark charts in the actual announcement were quite hilarious just uh, in terms of how some of the, uh, like... <laughs> numbers corresponded to one another. So with that, that is going to wrap up our first look at GPT-5 Pro. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Please feel free to subscribe and thanks for watching.